Hello, welcome to Unlocking Value. We know that your time is precious, so whether you're with us live or you're watching on demand, thank you for taking the time. You might be thinking, I'm working from home, but I'm actually joining you from Kantar Media's Innovation Suite, which is our home demonstration environment for audience measurement within our London offices. London, in fact, was home to our most recent World Audiences Summit, which brought together industry leaders from across the world. The latest summit was entitled Unlocking Value, which saw us learn from each other's experience and discuss how the cross-platform and cross-media measurement services that we're designing and delivering are helping thousands of media businesses deliver on their growth strategies. Taking experiences from that event and our latest thinking, we've created guides for those seeking to reach, grow and monetize their audiences. And over the next 40 minutes, we'll take you on a whistle-stop tour of some of the findings and hear from our clients and from industry leaders on what's most important to them. Indeed, you'll be amongst the first to access the guides, for which I'll share some details later on. So, if you're watching this on demand, sit back and enjoy the broadcast. And if you're joining us live, then please do get involved in the conversation. We'd love to hear your feedback and your ideas, since it's you, our broad client base, that define our mission. So, press that subscribe button, share your thoughts in the comments, and on social using the hashtag Audiences Unlocked. Getting involved isn't limited to just social media. For those who entered, some people will be joining us later, hopefully, to play a special edition of Play Your Cards Right. So stand by, because we might be calling on you. In the meantime, back to business. The call to change, to transform, is one that we hear so often now. Media markets continue to undergo unprecedented transformation, accelerated by new technologies, the arrival of disruptors, and changing audience behaviours. That's delivered an array of challenges for all of us. Advertisers especially are seeking how and where to play their own cards right, and to get the most value from their media budget. That's never been more important, as our first speaker now explains. We're going in to try and defend media budgets and it is, we are rightly being held more and more to account of what we're doing for the business and what we're bringing in, right? So, and e even if I could quote a unified reach measurement, even that is not enough at the moment, right? Like uh, if I go into the C CFO and say, don't worry, I'm gonna deliver you 70% reach, the challenge back will be, so what, right? <laughs> so, to your, so to your point, right, the first, the first step is, you know, some kind of unified measurement of, you know, who we're actually reaching. But the, the goal and, and what we need, I think, as advertisers is what the business impact of that is. And there's an intermediary step of, you know, unified measurement and cross-media measurement. But ultimately, what I'm challenged on is what we're delivering top line and bottom line. That's what it boils down to. So as we heard there from Andy, unified measurement is the first step to justifying media budgets for him. And indeed, we're using our own campaign audience validation tool to enable many more advertisers to understand their unique audience reach across media forms. So ultimately, the goal to strengthen the consumer signal through better cross-media measurement is fast becoming realised. 
around the world, advertisers and agencies are taking a more proactive role to deliver against this. There's clear momentum, but where do we start? Barat from Group M has some advice. Where it really breaks down is the video piece, mm. uh, where the dollars then fragment between linear OTT, mm. you know, online video, programmatic video, social video, gaming video, all of these are channels. Mm. Um, and so the focus for us is pretty much video. And I think that's where the opportunity is. That's where I think two thirds of our dollars are as a group. Okay. Um, and that's, that's kind of the focus and that's where most of our work is uh, happening. We can't wait. So. I think advertisers and buy side will have to step up. We'll have to fund the measurement system and not just let the networks and the sell side carry the burden. Uh, only then will change happen. That commitment to step up, to be more active in the direction and funding of media measurement is surely welcomed because understanding viewers across platform is a need for everyone. Broadcasters and platforms especially want to understand how best to navigate and make sense of a changing landscape. Indeed, the goal of measuring audiences across all viewing forms and understanding how online forms interlock with linear is crucial. The value of cross-platform measurement increases in turn as the number of viewing forms that we're now measuring expands. That need is now guiding the strategic development of media owner services and helping determine investments in both content and delivery. Cross-platform measurement now provides the definitive source of reliable data that's required to secure and increase advertising revenue for media owners and offer advertisers a more complete and accurate picture. For example, in Brazil, it's, they've been uh, trailblazers in adopting cross-platform measurement standards, with data now showing that linear TV and online are both strong. In that market, some networks are choosing to distribute their content via carriage deals, with YouTube and others, while others are also building their own streaming services. In the UK, Channel 4 was an early evangelist for the adoption of online forms into its strategy, and they've adopted a platform neutral approach. It's essential that they know how to leverage every option, as Martin Greenbank now explains. Now we're at a place where even the established media, there's no longer a separation between digital and uh, more traditional linear channels. It is one and the same, and this is how we start to see the world. They're just distribution methods for TV, um, uh, and that's, uh, TV is still the same, it's still about programs, it's still about video advertising. You can watch our streaming player, all four, on 28 different ways you can access it, whether that be through platforms, pucks, sticks, boxes, operating systems, interfaces, apps, consoles, or other services. All of those are actually the opportunities for us. They're not seen as threats. Um, we do co-pros with Netflix, we do co-pros with Amazon Prime, you know, we do partnerships with all these platforms to enable our content to reach our, our users because we are a publisher broadcaster. We're not trying to own this space, we're trying to leverage this space. The problem that TV measurement had over the last 10 years that's now been corrected, this is unmatched viewing. Remember, that was, the, that was the Tony's yellow bit. Caused us broadcasters a real pain because we needed to understand what that was. It was growing steadily because in there was the mix of all the stuff that wasn't attributed back to TV broadcast content. Because of the new measurement that Barb has been able to enable with the focal meter and the new people meter uh, panel that we're now rolling out, we're able to bring those levels back down to the kind of levels that we saw back 10 years ago. And in fact, we understand now where that viewing is going. Which means, don't forget, if we have a platform neutral uh, distribution strategy, it gives us as broadcasters a massive advantage of understanding where we need to do these partnerships, how we need to leverage uh, uh, the relationships that we're building, and where we're going to find the viewers that, uh, not just for now, but in the future. So partnerships play a key role in Channel 4's 
platform neutral strategy, but how is the data being used? We're joined by James Hesslin from ITV, another UK broadcaster, who is here to share how data is helping them to grow their audience and their business. Welcome, James. Hi. Thanks for being with us today. That's all right. Thank you for having me. A few months ago, you launched an exciting new video on demand platform, ITVX. What's different about it and how does it work alongside your linear programming? Yeah, so what we were trying to do with ITVX is essentially refresh our VOD strategy to bring it a bit more in line with ITV's current position in the linear market. So obviously, as you know, ITV is a leading position in the linear market and we really want to bring our VOD service along with that position as well. So historically, ITV Hub, our previous VOD service, was treated a bit more as something as a catch-up service and we want to treat it, treat it as something that's much more in line with a destination to discover content, which is something that we talk about a lot internally. So something that you come to this service, you find content that you want to watch and it makes you stay there for longer periods of time rather than, I don't know, you missed last night's episode of Corey and you want to come back to it to watch it the following day. But there is still a huge place for linear programming in our content. So programs like I'm a Celebrity, Love Island, Britain's Got Talent, they will always have a place in ITV. But we also want to have the VOD content there as well, just to bring people further into the VOD world who might have previously only viewed us in the linear content. So you and your teams must have spent a lot of time preparing for the launch. So ITV is the largest commercial channel in the UK. What was your goal with ITVX? Were you targeting existing audiences or new ones? Yeah, so as you mentioned, ITV has a huge share of the current linear market. So when we were thinking about a VOD service, we figured it would be a mass reach campaign. So as a result of that, we thought about a strategic segmentation. I know segmentations can get a bit complex, but with this one, we decided to keep it really straightforward. So there was two variables involved. The first variable was how much ITV you watch in a given week. That could be any ITV, that could be recorded, live, uh, watching on catch up, anything like that. And then the second variable was how much video on demand content you watch every week. So within that, we identified a core audience that we wanted to target with ITVX. And this audience essentially have a cursory relationship with ITV and watch at least some video on demand content. They can watch a lot of video on demand content, but they at least watch some content on video on demand services. And this group represented about 45% of the UK population. It varies a bit depending on when you look at the time periods, but it's about 45% of the UK population. So when you're looking at a group that big, nearly half the UK population, it's really important to use data to understand their viewing habits. And that's where we use the dovetail data a lot to really help us understand it. So the dovetail data being Barb's latest uh, in um, addition to their panel to look at streaming services and online behaviours. So four months in since the launch of ITVX, how is your new on-demand platform performing? Yeah, so as you mentioned, four months, it's still relatively early days, so it's certainly still in its infancy, I'd say, as a streaming service. However, and this is hot off the press, as I can confirm, this, over the past weekend, we actually hit a pretty significant milestone, which is one billion streams mark, which for me was a very uh, useful milestone to reach, partially because it's a very round number, so you know it's easy to remember, but also... It just goes to show how far it's come along in the first four months since it's launched. And in that time, we had some very big tenpole moments. So we had the 2020 World, uh, 2022 World Cup, I'm a Celebrity, Love Island. Those are the sort of big tenpole moments that bring people onto the service. But in that time, we've also had a few big originals that have kept people on the service when they come in for the big tenpole moments. So one of the big launch titles in December of 2022 was Without Sin, starring Vicky McClure. That proved to be a really big success when it first came on the service and it's due to launch on ITV1 next month. So it'll be really interesting to see how that performs. Uh, in addition to that, more recently we had The Twelve, which was an Australian drama starring Sam Neill, which came out in the last month or so and that's been a really big success for us, especially in that time since Love Island has wrapped up. So yeah, we've had a lot of titles like that that have been performing really well on the service. Thank you very much, James. That's right. We'll be joined by James again in a little while. While, I'm, while we'll hear about the value of data, not only from your own platform, but for completing, competing platforms. Much of the work James talked about is underpinned by the technology developed and delivered by our teams. Hailed as a once in a generation update of daily audience reporting, the changes have been led by Barb in the UK. 
let's hear from their chief executive, Justin Sampson, about this wider industry evolution. Barb's gold standard is no longer just about live and consolidated seven-day TV set viewing. Now, to get to this place, Barb has worked closely with all our industry stakeholders, with Kantar, with our other research agencies, on many phases of evolution. Understanding people, it's a theme, not just devices and distribution, is a fundamental part of our remit. And this is why it's critical to have a high-quality panel of homes at the core of our service. And the great news is we're committed to the largest ever increase in our reporting sample. We're going up to 7,000 homes, which is close to 16,000 people. But our service isn't just about having a panel. Our audience ratings are underpinned by the integration of big data. Since 2015, we've independently collected and audited a census count of viewing to broadcasters' VOD services. And we harness these device-based data with complementary people-based data sourced from our panel. With the cooperation of the broadcasters, we started reporting audiences to their streaming services in 2015. And then last November, we delivered a once-in-a-generation upgrade, which means our daily audience reporting now includes SVOD and video sharing platforms, even without their active participation in Barb. And this reflects a long-standing ambition to deliver comprehensive insight into what people watch and, and our determination to extend our reporting to embrace services such as Amazon Prime Video, Disney+, Plus, Netflix, TikTok, and YouTube. And it means the television and advertising industry now has access to independent, objective, and transparent measurement of audiences to these streaming services. And actually, since we recorded Justin's presentation, Netflix now subscribe to audience measurement services, both in the UK and Brazil. Indeed, as native video on demand platforms find value in industry audience measurement data, it's never been more important for all companies, media companies, to seek a single view of their audience in order to unlock sustained growth. But to truly unlock the power of cross-platform data, the whole industry needs to become a catalyst for change. It's why we're so pleased that media companies in Canada and Turkey are also trailblazers in this wider transformation, amongst a number of others. These markets are expanding their measurement systems, so both the buy and the sell side can reap the benefits of cross-platform data a subject that Kristin and Metin will now touch on. I think one of the challenges though with unlocking the data is, or unlocking the value, is the data itself doesn't really tell the story. The people who use the data tell the story. And I know that, that sounds so obvious, but if we think about who's in this room, who sits on the committees, um, who thinks about the investment behind a type of product like this, it's actually not the folks on the ground using the data and trying to make it real. Um, it's the analysts, it's the junior buyers, it's our team leads, our managers who are actually trying to get into this data set and say, how do I use this to improve what I put out there every day? And I think they're the folks we sometimes forget to include in these conversations. And that's actually where the value is because none of us have time to, to mine that data day to day and fit it into the process and into a media buy. That's their job. So I think we really need to rally that tier of folks who care to make this data come to life. When you put all the data in the key, you make a bigger picture or more meaningful picture because you should create or imagine in your mind the picture of the real world. And if you don't have all the data together and if, the, if you have data but they are not speaking each other, you are like a blind person in the middle of storm, you know. Or maybe to put it another way, if it's not measured, it's not managed. What we've learnt from early adopter markets is that it's not just about long-term value. The early insights are also informing how our clients implement, adapt and evolve their online video strategies to reach engage 
and monetize audiences. Getting an early view of the performance of a native video on demand platform in relation to a TV network's own services can have a huge benefit in guiding the development of channel strategies and program commissioning, as Rachel from the BBC and Tony from ITV now explain. Having access to the da this data is the most exciting thing I have seen in years in, in TV measurement. And every single week, I think we are surprised, curious, fascinated in the data that we're seeing. And the first moment for me, when, when we had the test data and we could look at Squid Game, and you could look at something that was being talked about as a cultural phenomenon, but you could actually see the scale of that audience. And you can see the audience build day in, day out. And you could see the interaction with other data, such as social media. To be able to uncover that, to see how many children were watching Squid Game, to see the relative size of it, as you as you're saying, compared to broadcast, it, it was actually nowhere near as big as some of our biggest shows. So, it, that, you know, one single show unlocked so much potential for us in terms of how we could use that data. This is a whole new world. You know, we're, we're going to have this huge kind of Avon service um, in November called ITVX, um, and we need different kinds of viewing in it. When you are building a, an online VOD service, you need these two types of viewing. Um, and I think without this barb data, I don't think it would have been quite as clear to us what to commission and what to buy. Rachel and Tony there talked about the value of cross-platform measurement, driven by the critical need for content owners and distributors to act rather than just react to know how to navigate this new terrain and to play their cards right for their business. Kantar Media's TGI Global Quick View study tells us that heavy video on demand viewers worldwide are 50% more likely than average to prefer to watch game shows. So in that spirit, it brings us neatly to our own live unlocking value edition of, you guessed it, play your cards right. Now, for those of you who don't know, Play Your Cards Right is a TV game show that's based on the American show Card Sharks. We've made a few changes, of course, but the principle is the same. We will uncover the first card and one of our contestants will then guess if the next card is higher or lower. Get it right and they move on to the next card. Get it wrong and they're out. Everyone who manages to reach the end wins a £100 gift card uh, to spend with a retailer of their choice. Thank you to all those who entered. Um, now, in the spirit of a live show, uh, anything can happen, as many uh, media owners will know uh, watching this YouTube. So if you're watching it live, you are watching this live from London. And if you're watching it on demand, this is something to enjoy afterwards. Uh, unfortunately, we did have three contestants, but due to a technical error, it seems that in true live spirit, they've, uh, they've disconnected. Uh, so I am going to ask my esteemed guests here in London uh, to join me uh, and to, to play the game with us. So, Bally, you are sitting here uh, next to me and I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just try and follow your lead. Um, so I'm going to give you your first card. Now, Bally, is it higher or lower? I'm going to go with lower. You're going to go with lower. Okay. Let's see how we go here. Oh. 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 Bally. Okay. Gosh, that's very good. Right. Uh, so it's the, the uh, three of hearts. So higher or lower than a three of hearts? I think we'll go with higher. You're going to go with higher. Okay. This is the this is the only thing keeping you between uh, this and a uh, hundred pound. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Fantastic! Well done. Excellent. Okay, uh, I'm I'm gonna uh, ask Bally. Uh, are, are you are you gonna use it for a retail of your choice, or are you gonna do something else with it? Give it to charity. You're gonna give it to charity. Yeah. That is excellent. Thank you very much. Um, we will we will get the charity shared on the comments, and we will uh, share it back with everyone. Okay, James, your turn. Now you've seen Bally's go. Here we go. 
Let's see what your first card is. Now, first card. Ooh. Ooh. King of Diamonds. Higher or lower, James, than the King of Diamonds? Oh, well, I'm going to have to say lower. Lower than the King of Diamonds, okay. Oh, more for Diamonds, okay, we're on a roll here. This is very, very good positive <laughs> energy here in the Innovation Suite here in London. Uh, uh, lower or higher than the four for diamonds? I'll say higher. You're going to say higher. Let's see. Unfortunately, I can't get a virtual drum roll because there's three of us in the room. It's the King of Hearts. <laughs> yeah, Fantastic. Right. Excellent, James. And of course, your offices are very close to a big shopping mall. Yes, indeed. Um, so I'm sure you'll be able to make very, very, very good use <laughs> of that. A big thank you to Bally and to James, and for those joining the next live broadcast, uh, hopefully the callers will uh, have no uh, connection issues. Luckily, uh, the realisation of cross-platform measurement in markets throughout the world is not a game of chance. Uh, as we've heard, and as you'll see in the reports that are now available to download here on the screen, Cross-platform measurement is delivering tangible returns on our clients' research investments. In Canada, in our partnership with Numeris, we've been acting early because engaging more data users in the process can unlock more value. Here's Neil with more. So, just a few words on the journey. I find the journey is fascinating. So we took a different approach. Um, and this was a multi-year, highly, highly engaged process with clients and the industry. So we chose a release early, learn, and modify approach. We've never done that before. And we released three data sets to a select group of clients so they can start learning the data, getting comfortable with the data, providing us feedback on the data so we can improve it. And we spent 13 months working with clients in the industry before we ultimately launched it. VAM is, for us, is generating new insights and key learnings. And Numeris has been sharing regular insights um, with our clients and the industry as they continue to learn the data. So what has been the market reaction? It's been positive. Um, they're adopting it. <clears throat> they recognize it's complicated. Um, and like I said, it's, it's blowing up some myths and it's giving us new perceptions on behavior. So moving early clearly enables media owners, content distributors and platforms to act and not just react. And cross-platform measurement is providing a realistic picture of how platforms, devices and services complement each other. Our reports actually put this into more context. UK data from Barb shows that the majority of long-form video streaming is now on large connected TV screens that are likely to have higher co-viewing than mobile devices. And of course, measuring streaming audiences and co-viewing on smart TVs offers the potential to identify and sell to much larger audiences. Cross-platform measurement now brings clarity to an ecosystem in which the real danger of mixing up variables like devices, users and people. Marta San Pedro from Dentsu in Spain tells us more. We usually approach uh, like the, the audiovisual data with three different variables. It's not the same uh, impression, so it's devices, users and people. An impression is a device. <coughs> so then uh, it, it happened that in, uh, in mobile, it is approximately the same that a user. But uh, in big screens, you have a <coughs> average 1.4 users per, mm. per device. So you cannot just say, oh, this is an impression, an impression, and just add it mm. at the map. Mm. You have to go from devices, from users, mm. and then add the profile to people. Mm. So that is just three points, but all over the, the, the ecosystem, people are mixing the variables. So we just have these three levels, very simple, yeah. to approach and try to, to, to have the, the, the data that can be 
group together yeah. with the same level of detail. You cannot just say, this is an impression for TV is the same. No, it's not exactly the same. Yeah. You, uh, in audiovisual, in big screens, you have more users That's right. than impressions. Understanding how linear streaming and on-demand delivery forms work together has never been more essential. And I'm joined once again by ITV's James Hesselin to unpack this a little more. James, you've got data coming in through multiple sources, linear viewing, live, on demand, online players, a whole host of other sources. And the bar panel data is at the center of these. So what's so unique and important about these? Yeah, so I was at a conference a while ago, I think it was December of last year, and it was a conference about TV and VOD advertising, and they were talking a lot about, um, well, there's a lot of uh, broadcasters and streaming services there, as well as some very good research agencies. But one of the things they were talking about is how, up until recently, a lot of the streaming services had lots of competing and varying metrics that they used to measure their own success. And I think the phrase that some people used to describe it was the idea of them marking their own homework. And I think that kind of speaks to the value of the Barb service because it's what everyone buys into it and they understand that it is the gold standard for audience measurement. It kind of provides that centralised, universal idea of what success looks like. And as a broadcaster, we, are, we really do use it so much in all our work throughout. As I mentioned earlier, the, um, the dovetail data that we used was really important for understanding our strategic segmentation because we were able to look at the amount of time that they spend looking at uh, linear, SVOD, even things like TikTok and YouTube, which really does help you understand audiences a lot more. And it's also something that I know from my colleagues who work in international research, it's definitely not something that you see in every single market. So it, it, we are really grateful to have it in the UK and it's something which you should be really pleased to use. So Netflix are now subscribing to audience measurement in the UK. What unique value does this data offer you? So, of course, it's early days since Netflix subscribed to the Barb data. However, firstly, it's a very strong endorsement of the Barb establishment survey and the Barb data that they are willing to invest in it after all these years and they clearly put, have a lot of faith in it that they've now bought into it. But I think the value of this SVOD data is that historically it has... For a lot of broadcasters, it's felt like the SVOD data has been a bit of a walled garden where they give you some scant bits of information about how their performance metrics are doing, but we can't really tell. And like I said, it's a bit like marking their own homework. Whereas now that they've subscribed to the bar panel and shows that they've bought into it a lot more, it indicates to us that they are willing to compare with the linear broadcasters and we actually can understand what success looks like, both from a like, linear channel such as ourselves, Channel 4, BBC, as well as those big streaming services such as Netflix, Disney Plus and Amazon Prime. And finally, what's next for you? So, we've got a lot of those bit, sort of big tentpole moments that I spoke to earlier still to come this year. We have the um, Women's World Cup happening for the Women's Football World Cup, the Men's Rugby World Cup, and even the return of Big Brother, which I'm sure everyone's excited about. Um, but outside of that, I think one of the things that we're trying to do, which is now that the service is up and running and we've got a lot of great content there, one of the internal metrics that we speak about a lot is this idea of spontaneous consideration. And what we mean by that is when you sit down and think of something to watch in the evening, what services come to mind when you think about what you'd like to watch? And often for people, there are a handful of services that come to mind before they think of ITVX. And what we really want to do is get ITVX to be top of mind so that when they sit down and think of something to watch, ITVX is right there and you get even more eyeballs onto the service. Thank you, James, once again for joining That's us. Right. Thank you. ITV, like many media owners, are continually assessing how they unlock even more value from their viewing data, allowing them to demonstrate the efficiency of their medium and enable agencies and advertisers to optimise audiences across different platforms. It's far from a local phenomenon. A&E networks reach audiences in over 100 countries and we spoke to Daniela Martinez who confirmed the need for the relative value of different platforms and devices to be appraised. A, a big, big challenge for us on the advertising side is actually how do you, you know, prove to the advertisers the, the effectiveness and the efficiency of it. 
And many times, you know, on the linear side, it's quite a challenge because we're still talking about reach and we're still talking about GRPs, but now the online is talking about leads and conversion. So it's, you know, how is it that we're gonna close the gap? And our pandemic was actually work on a total audience tool that would allow us to prove to the advertisers, well, to plan, to optimize the audiences across the different platforms that we offered, and then prove that effectiveness and that efficiency. That has been the game changer, because when we go to them, to advertisers, to our partners, we talk about their KPIs, and they're in the center, you know? I think that the challenge right now is actually how do we all come together to do that innovation, that next step? Because as a whole, or in isolation, we're not gonna be able to change that. So, you know, we're, we're pleased with what we've done. We, we've, let's say that revenue is it's, it's growing because we're able to prove that. But at the same time, we know that we need to go that next step. And taking that next step, widening the scope of measurement to include online video streaming means that networks and distributors like A&E can demonstrate the strengths of their content and environments and can compare all viewing forms using the most appropriate metrics. Metrics which the entire industry is calling for. So whilst the opportunity to source data directly from devices, platforms and users can expand possibilities, we know it's often one dimensional, often unverified and operating within the confines of a siloed platform. The World Federation of Advertisers Framework for Cross-Media Measurement supports that need to move beyond isolated data feeds towards more comprehensive, transparent measurement. Advertiser-led cross-media projects are taking it one step further, moving from talk to action. Clearly the North Star and the WFA framework gives us the broad aspiration uh, to start with uh, deduplicated reach and frequency for video and for digital display because the way we see this is that we would like to see, or advertisers would like to see us move from a world in which uh, we're dominated by proprietary black box systems that are based on impressions uh, to a world where uh, you are bringing in a rich and accountable audited source of data uh, with, with multiple metrics within them uh, and standards incorporated within that, uh, which would include um, duration, completion, viewability, screen size, sound on, sound off. Uh, all of the basis, uh, all of which could form the basis on which uh, advertisers and agencies can really start to ascribe that value uh, and which will allow media owners to be able to market themselves on the basis of the real role they play uh, mm -hmm. within the media mix, which is by definition going to be an apples with pears media mix mm -hmm. uh, as you start to move into uh, uh, cross-media measurement. In fact, we're working closely with Phil and his team to contribute core components of our products for their Origin project. Well, that just about brings us to the end. So I'd like to finish by saying a big thank you to all our speakers, to Bally and James for joining me here in London. Uh, and to those who didn't get to play your cards right, hopefully if you join us on the next live broadcast, you will. Our interactive reports provide more detail uh, including data, opinion and best practice from early adopter markets around the world. The reports are designed to equip both the buy and the sell side to unlock value from cross-media measurement. They're also available now by visiting kantar.com forward slash unlocking value or use the link now appearing in the comments box or in the description bar if you're watching on demand too. The rapid adoption of streaming, driven particularly by smart TVs and IPTV delivery, is making cross-platform measurement a case of when, not if. And so the value placed on audience measurement to build, retain and engage viewers has never been more significant. We hope the learnings that we've shared today show how you too can unlock growth to maximise the monetization of content and to deliver improved planning and evaluation of campaign performance across platforms. Thank you for joining us today. We're proud to be playing our part to drive growth for our clients and the wider industry. 
and we look forward to continuing the journey with you, unlocking long-term growth and value for all. Until next time, goodbye.